So everybody, all y'all smart people, all got phones. We have an app. It's a downloadable app, free of charge. U.S. Black Chamber directory. There's 114,000 black-owned businesses there. So you can't tell me you can't find us, because I got them all. GPS driven. So as soon as I touch down, and I'm looking for a black business, I can find a black business. Now the challenge that we're gonna have is the size and the scale, and that's what we have to start talking about consortiums and mergers and acquisitions, because that is still going to be a challenge for black businesses that are doing less than $100,000. Now I'm gonna tell a little bit of story about uh, my black bank relationship. Because when I first went to DC, I didn't know anybody, but I knew we had a black bank, we had industrial bank. Right. I had no idea who they were, I didn't know them, but I said I was going to invest my money, my $500, I'll put it in industrial bank. But what I did was I said, I want to meet the manager, I want to meet the owner. I want to have a face-to-face -face conversation so that he knows who I am. I went and I met him, I took a photo with him, I said, hey man, I'm just here to let you know who I am and what I'm trying to do. And he said, oh, I appreciate that. Now, fast forward, I got ready to buy my home. So I was very intentional when I bought my home. I used a black realtor. That's simple. No big deal. I used a black mortgage company. We have one in, in, in DC. I used a black bank to finance the deal, obviously. I used a black moving company. I used a black home inspector. I used a black uh, landscaper. I used a black uh, installation. Everyone that touched a transaction was black. Yeah. Two things happened. One, they didn't know each other. So you know what I told the realtor? This is your consortium. When you sell your houses to black people, usually the homeowner only buys three houses in their lifetime. So they don't know who to go to. They ask the realtor, hey, who, who should I use to move my car? Who should I use? This is the group. Take them all with you every time you sell a home to a black person. Mm -hmm. The second thing is pay them what they ask for. That's right. right. So it costs a dollar, yeah. I paid them a dollar. I didn't say, hey man, can I get that 75 75 cent hookup? You know, can I get that homie love, that sister girl discount special? Because that is defeating our own community. It's about making them money so that they can grow, hire, and put resources back in our community. If we keep asking people for the discount, no one in our community is gonna be able to grow. We don't ask Macy's or anybody else, hey, can I get that sale price when they don't sell? We have to do the same thing. Now, I'm going a, I'm to a say, usually at this point, someone asks a chamber person, hey, man, I want to go into business. What do, I, what do you think I should do? And usually I say, you know, find something we don't have. Because everybody's saying, well, I want to go into something that's technic, technical or something sexy or something that's new. And I say, don't do that. Don't do that, young people. Because what is happening, if you look at Black Enterprise top 100 list, every nine years, the folk that are there drop off. And we never see them again. And it's not because they weren't good businesses. They didn't have a succession plan to pass off to. So I tell young people, don't worry about creating the next mousetrap. Find somebody that's already doing something like a little bit that you might want to do, and go volunteer for them. Go volunteer. Because they usually don't have the money to pay you, but they can definitely use your resources and your skills and all those new technologies that you're bringing and a couple things will happen. You'll earn yourself a job. Because you see, small businesses necessarily don't have $100,000 of revenue just sitting around to be able to hire you, but you grow that firm to where they are making an additional $100,000, now you've earned yourself a job. 